Good morning, Periscope. How is everyone doing? Happy Wednesday. Had to think about for a second what day it was. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to today's Sunrise Scope. Thanks for joining. If you've been joining the Sunrise Scope all week, I appreciate it. Good morning, thank you for joining. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for sharing with your friends. Thank you for inviting your followers. Hey, good morning, Kingdom Warrior. Good morning, Derby Line. Good morning, Lene. Good morning, Prophetic. Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? Thank you so much for joining Sunrise Scope. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for inviting your followers. You guys rock. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. Good morning, Nanette. Good morning, Purpose and Dance. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Nishia. Good morning. Thank you guys for joining. Awesome. So if you guys have been um, tuning in to the Sunrise Scope all week, you know that we've been talking about getting unstuck. So as people are joining, I'm kind of curious how long, um, if, if you guys could just comment, I'd love to know how many of you have been joining um, Sunrise Scope for this entire week, or if you've been joining Sunrise Scope for the past month, how many have you watched, how many Sunrise Scopes have you been a part of, or if you've been here for the whole week, let me know so I can give you a shout out. Hey, good morning. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Hey, good morning, Nikki. How are you? Good morning. Second day. Awesome. Thanks, Tracy, for joining for the second time. Hey, all week and all month. Thank you, Drea. This is your third time. Lene, Derby Line, every day. Awesome. Almost all of them, Purpose and Dance. Awesome. All week, this week. Awesome. First day. Good morning. All of them. Daily routine. Awesome. Thanks so much. All month, all day. Awesome. You guys rock. Thank you for joining Sunrise Scope every day. Second time. <laughs> Nikki, every day, you're awesome. Good morning. Alina, good morning. Watching for almost a month from Rita. Awesome. Perfected Life television show uh, from the... Uh, awesome. Thank you for joining. First day this week. Oh, thank you. Good morning. Second time. Hi. Good morning from Oakland, California. All of them except this week. Awesome. Good morning. Well, thank you guys all for joining. Oh, your first time. If it's your first time, my name is Monica Vandeneed, and I am the founder of WisdomIsTheNewBlack.com, which serves as a community of wise people looking to walk in wholeness and looking to walk um, and, and live a kingdom lifestyle. So thank you guys for joining. You guys rock. Um, if you could just, you know, I've been trying to get my hearts up. So if you wouldn't mind to just give hearts throughout the broadcast, if you're enjoying it, feel free to invite your followers. Feel free to share. I love having you guys on here every morning. So as you know, this week we've been talking about getting unstuck and how so many people often experience stagnation in their life, often feel like they're not moving forward. And so my goal on these broadcasts is to help everybody get unstuck and to be able to move forward. So today specifically, I want to talk about breaking the mold and what it means and what it looks like to break the mold in your life. So I truly believe that God is constantly doing something new, that God is a God who is creative, that God did not put us here at a time like this by mistake, but that God has put us here to be a solution. You know, there's a reason that I'm here at such a time as this. There's a reason that you're here at such a time as this. I believe that God put us on this earth at this time to be solutions. So, you know, we're constantly facing new problems. And the only way to solve a new problem that's never been solved before is to be the kind of solution that has never existed on the earth. So I truly believe, you know, that God is creative. He reveals himself throughout scripture and throughout the Bible as the creator. So I think it's sad when people are constantly coming up with inventions, coming up with solutions that are generating all this income and wealth, and it's not Christians. Because I believe if we are who hears from God, if we are the ones that God calls friend, if we are the one, you know, who seeks God and hears his voice, he is creator and creative. And what that means is that we should be the ones coming up with solutions. We should be the ones coming up with ideas. We should be the ones being the answers to society's problems. So I truly believe that God wants to and is doing a new thing, but that we must have an ear to hear and to perceive what he's doing and how he is doing this new thing. You know, without new ideas and without new inventions, we'll never be able to progress forward. You know, and I truly believe, like I said, that there's a reason that you and I are here and on this earth at such a time as this. And Moses isn't here. Elijah isn't here. It's because God created and formed us to be the solutions just as 
because they were solutions at the time that they were walking the earth. So we have to understand that God desires for us to break the mold, that God is doing a new thing, that God wants us to be solutions to this generation. You know, this generation is lost. This earth is lost. You know, creation is groaning for solutions and for answers. But the only way we're going to see revival, the only way we're going to see people set free is if we begin to become the solutions that God predestined us to be for such a time as this. And you know, the only thing that holds us back from being able to be the solution and break the mold is ourselves. And I want to go ahead and read Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, which says this, but forget all of that. It is nothing compared to what I am going, hold on, block party. Oh my gosh, can I catch it? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says this, but forget all of that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do, for I'm about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? So it's interesting that at the end of this scripture, the question is, okay, I've already begun to do something new, but it's not that, you know, I'm not doing something new right there. It says that something new has already begun to be done, but it says, do you not see it? So the reason that we're not being solutions, the reason that we don't have anything new, the reason that we're not creative, the reason that we're not the ones coming up with inventions, coming up with solutions, rising up to be the answer is because we are not seeing it. You know, the greatest hindrance to us breaking the mold is ourself. I think it's sad oftentimes when Christians are almost seem to be the last one to arrive on the scene, the last one to see a new thing that is happening. You know, whether it's technology, whether it's science, whether it's, you know, even a cure for cancer, whether it's, you know, finances, a lot of people have this idea that Christians should be poor. But if God has called us to be solutions, and if God has called us to have power and platform to be able to speak and advance his kingdom, I would tell you that he's not called us to be poor because the only way that we can be solutions is if we have a wealth in order to be able to distribute it to others. If we're supposed to feed the hungry, if we're supposed to clothe the poor, if we're supposed to feed widows and take care of widows, how are we ever going to do this without finance and without wealth? So, you know, I'd really like to break this idea that Christians should be poor. If we're going to be solutions, if we're going to have a platform, if we're going to have authority, the greatest authority in the secular world is money. So if we want to make a difference and be able to feed people, be able to build schools, be able to be a solution to poverty, a solution to violence, what we need is to be distributors of wealth so that we can bring other people in out of this poverty mindset and to be able to distribute wealth, to build schools and to be solutions. You know, like I said, I believe the greatest hindrance to us being solutions and to us, you know, even being able to be creative is us. And the reason that we are unable to be the solutions and to break the mold is because we are in love with being comfortable. We are in love with being complacent and we refuse to abandon the comfortable ways of our life in order to launch out and be the solution. A lot of times God is already trying to break the mold, whether that's setting you free from generational curses, whether that's setting you free from a mentality that's holding you back, whatever it is, God is already working a new thing within you. He has called you a new creation. He is the potter and you are the clay in his hands and he wants to make a new vessel. But the thing that holds him back is our in, in, inability to change, our unwillingness to shift, our unwillingness to move. And so I want to go ahead and share with you guys Exodus 16, 2 through 3. And this is what it says. It says, there too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron, saying, if only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moan. At least there we sat around and filled our pots with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. So right there, you know, what was God trying to do? God was trying to deliver the Israelites from Egypt, from the slavery that the Egyptians had forced them into. God was trying to deliver them. God was trying to do a new thing. But when this new thing and when this breaking the mold became uncomfortable, they got mad at Moses. They got mad at Aaron. They got mad at God. And they said, God, can't we just go back to that old place of being comfortable? Can't we just go back to that place where at least we had food and at least we had drink and at least we were able to fill our pots? So what happened is God wanted to break the mold. God wanted to deliver them. God wanted to set them free. God wanted to break this generational curse of being bound by 
slavery to the Egyptians. But what happened when he took them out was that because they became uncomfortable, they longed for and yearned for that place of complacency, that place of comfortable. Even though what they longed for was slavery, they desired that slavery because it was easier than breaking the mold. So what I want to challenge some of us this morning is, are you so in love with being comfortable, so in love with being complacent, so in love with the familiar that you're refusing to break the mold, to be the solution that God created you to be, to be the person that God created you to be, and to rise up and to walk in your purpose and destiny because you're so in love with the past and so in love with this place that is familiar to you. I'm telling you, God wants to break the mold. So one of the first things we have to understand is that we have to be okay with being uncomfortable. If you're going to be a world changer, if you're going to be a record breaker, if you're going to be someone who ushers something new into the earth, if you're going to be someone who sets the pattern instead of following, if you're going to be a leader, you have to be okay with being uncomfortable. You know, we want to see new results, but what insanity is, is doing the same thing over and over and over again, yet expecting different results. So if we want to see new solutions, if we want to see new results, we have to be willing to do something different. If you don't do anything different, you can't expect different results. If you don't do anything new, you can't expect new results. If you don't do anything that is world breaking, don't expect world records to be broken as a result of that. We must be willing to do something new if we want to see new solutions, if we want to see new answers. You know, Steve Jobs said this. He said, people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So you have to be willing to change, to think that you can change the world. You have to be willing to think outside of the box. You have to be willing to think outside of the mold. You must believe that you are able to do it. You know, it's the people who are crazy enough to believe for a new thing, to do a new thing, to believe they can change the world that end up doing it. You know, we have to be okay with being uncomfortable. We have to be okay with leaving a place of complacency, leaving a place of familiarity if we ever want to break the mold 